EBITDA margin is a profitability ratio that compares EBITDA to revenue as a percentage. It excludes a company's capital structure and backs out non-cash expenses as well as taxes. Hence, it makes for easy comparability across companies. Let's review EBITDA quickly. If we start at the bottom of a company's income statement, we can add back each of the components to arrive at earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Let's look at the EBITDA margin formula. Starting with EBIT, you simply add back depreciation and amortization. If you start with net income, you also add back interest and taxes. Once you have EBITDA, you take it and divide it by revenue to get a percentage. Here's an example. A company has earnings before interest and taxes of 1 million. The revenue on the income statement was 5 million and depreciation was 1 million. What is the company's EBITDA margin? The solution is a million of EBIT plus a million of DNA divided into 5 million of revenue is an EBITDA margin of 40%. All else being equal, the higher the EBITDA margin, the better. Let's look at the pros and cons of using EBITDA margin as a metric. The advantages are that it eliminates the capital structure of a business and non-cash expenses. Because it's before interest, it does not include the effect of debt financing, so it makes companies with different capital structures easier to compare. It gives investors a sense of how much EBITDA there is relative to revenue, so it's much more effective than just EBITDA on its own. It can be used to benchmark across different companies and is widely used in valuation, so it's heavily quoted. Now let's look at the downside. The cons are that it does not necessarily provide a clear picture of cash flow because it does not include capital expenditures as well as changes in working capital or taxes and other expenses that the business actually has to pay. It is also not recognized in generally accepted accounting principles. Thank you for joining us for this EBITDA margin tutorial.